Nina had a feeling that something strange was going on at the hospital. Normally, nurses weren't watched so closely, but a recently admitted patient could only be visited at certain times. Olga, do you know what's happening? Nina asked her friend, who was also taking care of the patient, Svetlana. I have no idea, this has never happened before, Olga replied. There are two big men guarding Svetlana, and no one else is in that part of the hospital. I can't imagine how much money someone paid for all this. Olga found it eerie to walk through the empty hallway. Sure, the rooms for rich patients were usually quiet, but there were always a few people around. This time, however, all the other patients had been moved, leaving Svetlana all by herself. Honestly, I don't think she's sick at all, Nina whispered. She's always under sedation. Nina had once asked the head doctor, Konstantin Sergeyevich, about it, but he had just glared at her angrily and acted like he didn't hear her. The next day, he warned her not to be too curious if she wanted to keep her job. Nina didn't know what to do. She was a single mom, raising her seven-year-old daughter on her own. The extra money from working at the clinic was important to her. She knew Constantine was right. It wasn't her business. But Nina's conscience kept nagging at her. She didn't want to believe they were doing something bad to Svetlana. That's not what nurses were for. Olga was in a similar situation. She was raising two teenage boys alone. And she was also worried about Svetlana the mysterious patient no one could get near. Together, Nina and Olga came up with a plan. Olga would sneak into the doctor's office to check Svetlana's medical records. Nina decided she wouldn't give Svetlana sedatives for one night and would try to talk to her when the guard left late at night. Nina felt a little better as she headed home, even though she had stayed at work longer than usual and wouldn't get paid for the extra hours. The head of the department always said it was no big deal to work late claiming he was doing them a favor by giving them such a good job. In reality, Ilya Evgenievich picked the most capable and hardworking employees, people who had no other options. Where could you go if you were the only one supporting your family? Nina never imagined she would end up alone with Igor. They had gone to school together, and following her grandmother's advice, she had carefully chosen Igor as her future husband. She wanted to make sure he was serious about marriage and having children. Why are you always testing me, Nina? What matters is whether I love you, Igor would say with a smile. He was tall, had curly hair, and bright eyes, while Nina was petite, with blue eyes and a cheerful smile. Love is important, but besides my grandmother, I have no one else. She's very ill. I want to choose someone for life, someone who will always be there, Nina replied. You can't choose children, but you can choose husbands, she said. Wow, you're smart and sensible. Go ahead and keep testing me. Igor said patiently. He introduced her to his parents, who turned out to be nice people and engineers. They liked Nina and appreciated her seriousness. During her first visit, she impressed her future mother-in-law by helping prepare lunch. Nina's grandmother was thrilled when they got married and even learned before she died that they were expecting a grandson. But after their daughter Natasha was born, Igor changed. What did I suffer for? I wanted a son, not to spend money on a girl, he said breaking Nina's heart. Her pregnancy had been tough, and the doctors warned her that she might not be able to have more children. Igor found out about this too. What do you mean? She's our daughter, a child of love. I know we won't have more kids, but we'll have grandchildren someday, Nina said. Are you sure you'll even have more kids? Igor replied cruelly. Nina felt anxious, but didn't push him. Soon after, Igor started having affairs. His parents also stopped caring about Nina when they realized Igor didn't plan to stay with her and was thinking about divorce. No one directly insulted her, but everyone acted like she didn't exist, even towards Natasha, who was ignored by the whole family. Why did you marry me in the first place? Nina asked Igor after he announced that one of his mistresses was pregnant and it was a boy. I thought things would work out with a nice girl like you, but you're not helping my career. There's no dowry, and now you've given me a daughter. That's it, no more kids. Plus, you're boring. The spark we had is gone, Igor said coldly. He told her he was divorcing her to marry Valeria, his new girlfriend. Nina was heartbroken. How could he just throw her away like an unwanted pet? Igor had been dating other women to try to give his parents the son they wanted. How had Nina lived with him and not seen what a terrible person he was? In anger, she slapped him and moved into her room at the dormitory that same week. After selling her grandmother's big house, where she had grown up, she realized city life offered better opportunities for her child, and her job paid more. At first, Igor paid decent child support, but then a friend helped him get a job where most of his pay was in cash. 
so he started sending her less. Igor stopped visiting or calling, and it became clear that Natasha had only one parent, her mother. Nina was still young, and some men showed interest in her, saying things like, What have you got to lose now? You're a divorcee with a child. It felt like they thought being abandoned by her husband made her less valuable, but Nina didn't want to get involved with those kinds of men. She believed she could manage on her own and wanted to stay true to her principles. Nina, you did everything right by marrying well, but you still made a mistake. One man, Victor, said, trying to win her over. I was young and naive, but I've stayed true to myself, and that matters. Acting with integrity is important, Nina replied, hoping he would understand that just because she had made one mistake didn't mean she would settle for anyone now. Let me tell you something, women, you can't live alone, Victor insisted, not understanding her at all. He kept saying she had lost her value on the marriage market and should take what she could get. You're young but you've already got some issues. If you keep this up, you'll never be happy, he sighed. Nina stopped arguing. Victor got angry and told her to stop being so picky. You can't change someone's mind if they lack common sense, she thought to herself. The next day, Nina and Olga put their plan into action. Olga found out from the documents that Svetlana wasn't really sick. The head of the department had fake medical certificates with conflicting information ready for any situation. The truth was that Svetlana was being kept in the hospital for some unknown reason. When the guard left, Nina was able to speak to Svetlana. She hadn't given her any sedatives that day and had slipped her a note asking her to pretend to be asleep and that Nina wanted to help. Listen, you're not sick at all, you're being kept here for some unknown reason, and they're heavily guarding you, Nina said, sharing what she had learned. Svetlana, a fragile brunette with green eyes and a short haircut, replied, Well, now there's nothing we can do, I have nowhere to go. She explained that her wealthy father had died, and her stepmother was trying to take everything from her. Svetlana felt safer in the hospital than at home because she had almost been hit by a car twice in the past year and had narrowly escaped an attack by thugs. Your guard just said everything is calm and that he won't be back until morning. Get ready, and I'll help you out through the service entrance. No one will notice, Nina suggested, offering for Svetlana to stay with her in her dorm room. But I don't have any money, Svetlana said, sounding resigned. Don't worry, I know a good taxi driver. He's a decent guy. I'll call him, Nina reassured her, encouraging her to act quickly. Nina remembered she had always been told to marry Kolya, but since he was a few years younger, she never took him seriously. A few months ago, she had run into him at a water park while celebrating Natasha's birthday. Kolya had moved to the city and hadn't married yet. He had offered to help her any time she needed it and Nina believed he meant it. Of course, I'll come right away, Kolia said when Nina called him, cancelling a trip he had planned and asking a friend to pick up his client. When they were in the car, and Nina explained everything, Kolia said, this could be dangerous, let's get Natasha and have you both stay at my place, I have three rooms. Kolia mentioned that his brother had become successful, started a business, and bought him an apartment, hoping he would settle down and start a family. You're probably right. Svetlana's guards do look dangerous, and everything she told me is concerning, Nina admitted, knowing that Kolya was reliable and trustworthy. They stopped by the dormitory, and Nina told her neighbor to act like she didn't know anything. Luckily for Nina, her vacation started that day, giving her three weeks off work. The next day, Nina's phone kept ringing. Her neighbors informed her that someone had broken into her room and messed everything up. The head of the department demanded that she come to work immediately, even though she was on vacation, to explain what had happened. I don't know anything about Svetlana, Nina lied. And why aren't you home? Her boss accidentally revealed. Why do you think I'm not home? Nina asked. But the head of the department just hung up and sent a message saying that if she didn't show up, she would face consequences. Two months later, after Svetlana's lawyer sorted everything out, the danger was finally over. It turned out Svetlana's stepmother had been anxious because her father hadn't left her anything in his will, and she had planned to get rid of Svetlana. I don't know how to thank you, Svetlana said to Nina. Well, come to our wedding, Kolya replied. After the dangerous situation, everything moved quickly, and they decided to spend their lives together. It took about six months for this to happen. How did you know I needed help so urgently? Svetlana asked. Luck, my ex-husband's new wife is a notary and she told him about her wealthy client, that's how I found out, Nina explained. Why didn't you tell me right away? Svetlana asked, surprised. 
I tried, but you were so out of it, you couldn't process everything, Nina smiled. It turned out that the long-awaited heir hadn't brought Igor any happiness, he was now a single father, and his wife was in prison, meanwhile, Nina was expecting another girl, and Kolia couldn't be happier. If you enjoyed this story, please support me by clicking the like button. To stay updated on new stories, subscribe and hit the bell icon. All the best.